tested probably a couple of years ago that I hitchhiked back from the trailer and it was like, huh? <laughs> you gotta be kidding. That would not be a smart thing to do. There's no way. You know, I mean, just the fear that came up around that was a real indication to me that I wasn't to do that. But when the suggestion was made this time, it was like, oh yeah, why not? I mean, I didn't feel any fear about doing it. You know, it was like, sure, this will be fun. This will be an adventure. You know, and it's already all worked out anyway. It's already taken care of, and I just get to see who I ride with. Who did you ride? I rode with a trucker. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a great and a great um, symbol too, because I've never been in a trucker's cab, and it's way up. I mean, talking about a, a vantage point that's like above the battlefield. That, <laughs> that's what it represented yeah, to me. The battlefield. Wow. <laughs> Some people would say you were in the battle. Above the battleground, above the battlefield. It's a way of, of being up above and detached from, step back from that dreamer of the dream analogy. And uh, yeah, it was great. And I would do it again. I mean, and that's where the fun really comes in that you're talking about uh -huh. the joy, the fun. That you know, sometimes I forget a tendency to look at this so serious. Lighten up there, you know, there is a lightness to it. And it's not bolting and making yourself look like the goal. It's allowing yourself to flow to the goal. In um, my defense, since my safety lies, and I've been working with that concept of some now. It's helpful as a concept at this point, <laughs> and maybe it won't be a concept in the future and I'll be able to bring it to application, but like, again, like you talk about that fear and letting things go, I think that's one of the reasons why I want to stay in prison is because some of the most pe people that I fear are doing. <laughs> and so where else can I learn to, to let that fear go, you know, uh, other people, you know, um, and uh, really be defenseless and just there, you know, vulnerable. And see them, not mm -hmm. for their guilt and sin, but who they truly are. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Only it's being invulnerable, not vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, invulnerable. <laughs> right. If you were vulnerable, then there would be a Yeah, yeah. Even the thing with picking up hitchhikers. Um, until recently, I never picked up a hitchhiker when I was driving by myself. And and I noticed I wanted to be able to do that fearlessly. And I wouldn't do it if I wasn't fearless about it. And so I just kept like opening my mind up to that possibility, you know. And um, and again, recently. Uh, I was on my way down to the trailer. That was the same trip, actually. On the way down is when I picked up a hitchhiker for the first time. And it was a great holy encounter, and he was just immensely grateful. And it was just the easiest thing, and, and I felt real comfortable with picking him up. I mean, I didn't even question it. I didn't even, like, do I or don't I? Is it safe? Isn't it safe? That didn't even come into it. It was just like I stopped. Yeah. You know, it was just an automatic thing. I just stopped. I think too, the more you go into it and the more you start to, I call them like the little metaphysical connections start to take place in your mind. And like for instance, judgments or even preferences. You know, everyone who walks this work earth has preferences. They have food preferences, they have sexual preferences, they have climate preferences, they have, I mean, Relationship. Relationship preferences, clothing preferences, you know, you can just say, well, there's all these different things. And that's all part of that ordering and hierarchy of illusions is what Jesus calls it. So initially when you're starting, though, it's like, well, but this is who I am. This is who I am as a person. And the more you start to make the metaphysical connections and you say, I want this to loosen up, I want to question, you know, you don't go right for your major ones right off the bat because you know, you'll fall flat on your face but but just I know initially when we would travel even things like drink preferences coffees and teas and 
different things like that, some things it's like, well, what in the world does what I drink have to do with accepting the atonement? <laughs> it just does not seem to be. I'm working on forgiving and so and so and this and that, and what does coffee have to do with with forgiveness or the atonement? But the more you get into the metaphysics and you start to see that it's more than just judging your brothers, but it's this whole scheme of of judgments. You know, if I am going into a restaurant and I have a favorite dessert, and I go in there and I'm all my my e on expectations down here is that they'll have that whatever, cherry cheesecake or whatever, and I'm just going into that restaurant, and I have my heart set on it, my E expectation. And they come and they say, oh, sir, we are so sorry, but we don't have the usual. Esther, you say, bring the usual, we don't have it. It's, it has a little bit of a dip, you know, a little bit of a, ooh, like a letdown. That's not peaceful. I mean, you know, you can see in the end how, how subtle it goes. If I have expectations, even about getting a dessert and they don't have it, then you could take out your instrument for peace workshop and you can, <coughs> it may seem silly to do that on a, about a dessert, but there aren't any large or small upsets. Once you've got a box, you're fragmented. Yeah. Any more than the one box, yeah. you're fragmented. And it's come up too as I've traveled and been taken into homes and, and traveled all over is that there's it seems as if there's there's all these different family systems and it's the way it seems that everybody has all these preferences and so you know the ego's way of, of being nice and fitting in is to wear the chameleon you know every home you go in put on a different costume and there's no peace in being the chameleon yeah. of, of walking on eggshells of like oh of people pleasing to the max <laughs> you know of like oh I don't want to upset this or, oh and then the next place this and the next place this the only true peace when you are seemingly in a lot of settings with a lot of different people is to stay with the Holy Spirit <laughs> we're back to that again <laughs> the Would one you answer make sure your hands are this far apart <laughs> this far apart <laughs> right shoulder width apart so it, it, what happens <coughs> is you end up having you know, the more you really train your mind, you end up into a real flow, and it's a real easy-going thing, where things just aren't a big deal, you know. So they serve you this, or they serve you that. Well, it's going to be a great holy encounter whether they serve you this, or they serve you that. So you take a car, or a train, or a bus, or you walk, or you hitchhike, or, you know, there's a lot, it seems like there could be some gradations there of going in style, going in comfort. <coughs> hiking on a 90 degree day <laughs> sometimes can seem uh, but it's like once you, if you're just looking for those holy encounters and you're really tuned in then it's like all of that just like falls into the background and that's where it's fun and that's where it's fun mm -hmm. yeah. it's a real adventure 